collapsed into the mountainous flank. By New Year's Eve, the Japs had surrounded the city. They quickly pierced the outer defenses and attacked the inner defenses from four directions. In spite of fierce resistance, the Japs were certain that the fall of Changsha was only a matter of hours. What they didn't know was that they had walked into a well-baited trap, for the Chinese forces which had withdrawn into the hills now swept down on the Jap supply line and cut them to ribbons. The Jap forces attacking the city soon ran out of food and ammunition and began a withdrawal, whereupon the Chinese launched a counter-offensive and pushed the Japanese back where they had come from. Jap column was forced to run the gauntlet of continuous attack by the pursuing Chinese forces. Changsha was a magnificent victory for the people of China, the people who wouldn't surrender, the people determined to fight for their freedom, their good earth, the people who can't be beaten. And as 1944 dawns, there is another and greater story being written. From the Aleutians to the South Pacific, we are on the offensive. In the jungles of New Guinea, in the Gilbert and Marshall Islands, on the shores of New Britain, on the broad Pacific waters, Japan faces the daily expanding power of the nations she attacked. In India, American, British, and Chinese forces are gathering strength under Lord Malpat for the liberation of China. For China's war is our war. And now her millions belong not only to United China, but also to the United Nations. Leader of our American forces is General Stilwell, who has the unique honor of being the chief of staff of all the Chinese expeditionary armies. Division after division of picked Chinese troops are being flown in our planes from China to India, where they are armed and equipped with the most modern American weapons. Trained and hardened to spearhead the coming drive against Japan. Through enemy-held territory in northern Burma, the new Lido Road is being pushed. Over mountains, through jungle and swamp, from India to China, to connect with the old Burma Road. In the jungle on either side, American and Chinese patrol protect the road and strike at the jack. Their supplies and ammunition brought in by plane and parachute. From fields in India, an air transport command plane takes off every six minutes, loaded with artillery, jeeps, ammunition, men and supplies for the armies of China. Over this Burma Skyway, over this hump of mountains 16,000 feet high, more tonnage is being flown into China than was ever trucked in over the old Burma Road. And in the skies over China, Japan faces new opposition. Young Chinese, Many of them trained on the fields of Arizona, New Mexico, California, fly and fight beside their American comrades. The fighters and bombers of the Chinese Air Force and those of General Chenault's 14th Air Force today fly far and wide over China. Hitting enemy concentrations, smashing their sea lanes along the China coast, The 
same people that moved a nation 2,000 miles, that built the Burma Road, are building airfields out of stones, mud, and patient, tireless hands. still cut off by land and sea from the rest of the world, Chinese armies and Chinese guerrillas still stand firm against the Jap war machine. The oldest and the youngest of the world's great nations, together with the British Commonwealth, fight side by side in the struggle that is as old as China herself, the struggle of freedom against slavery civilization against barbarism, good against evil. Upon their victory depends the future of mankind. We in China, like you, want a better world. Not for ourselves alone, but for all mankind. And we must have it.